In our last tutorial, we developed this letterhead. We very cleverly tried to design it based on only using two colours so that we would save money by only having a two colour printing process. However, we did actually make some mistakes. Of course, I allowed those to deliberately happen so we could learn more about this subject. So this subject is really about two colour printing or if you like spot colour printing and then how to prepare that using the PDF format to send off to our printer. So I'm going to select this graphic here, I'll pop it in the middle there and then I'll zoom in so we can just take a look at well what's wrong with this? I can only see two colours, how can there be more than two there? The best way for me to demonstrate to you that there's more than two colours here is to come down to the fill flyout and choose the colour docker window. With that little lock turned on every time you choose an object with a fill you'll see a display of the formula that's used to create that colour. In this case we're seeing that CMYK is being used and of that 60% cyan and 40% magenta are creating the baby blue colour. If I click the orange, similarly, we see magenta and yellow are being used to create that. So there's a lot more than two colours in this actual print. CMYK, or what we call process colour printing, is an industry standard for multicolour prints. However, when you want to print, say, only two colours, as we do, we tend to use a process called spot colour printing. So that's what we're going to learn about. So that you can understand this a little further, I'm going to come up to the print icon. The print icon opens the print dialog box. Now we're going to use this dialog box as a tool to learn more about colour. So let's click separations, then I'm going to turn on print separations, and immediately down the bottom you can see the required colours for this print run. Corel Draw shows you them and it also selects them, letting you know they're all being used. This is what we call process colour printing or full colour printing. I'm going to use this icon and open the mini print preview to demonstrate this to you. If I turn on print separations in colour, each one of these plates will display in the appropriate colour. I can choose a different plate from the drop down menu as you can see. Each one of these plates represents what's going to be printed on the sheet of paper as it passes through the printing press. When it gets to the section that prints magenta, well that's what's going to be printed. For cyan, that's what will be printed. We don't want to use this process because we want to create a two colour print. So how do we go about that? I'm going to cancel this. How do we convert this to what we call a spot colour printing job to save us money? To use spot colours means we need to use a different colour palette other than the one that we have on the right here. However, CorelDRAW will cleverly convert these colours for us. For example, if I select the background rectangle and again come down to the fill flyout and the uniform fill dialog box. You can see the formula of the existing colour right there. However, if we go and we go across to the palettes tab, we can change the palette. You'll see from this drop down menu here, there are many palettes that you can work from. And here is where you need to communicate with your printer. Ask them what colour palette do they want you to work with. Look, as an average, most do use the Pantone solid coated set of colours. Notice how Corel Draw has automatically chosen a colour that it believes is fairly close to ours. That's our old colour and that's the new colour. So if you simply click OK, you'll now notice that our rectangle has adopted the new Pantone colour. This is great. You know what? We're going to be clever from here on in and we're going to create our own colour palette. If I select this rectangle and come up to Window, down to Colour Palettes, I can choose create palette from selection. So in other words, a color palette will be created using the object I have selected. What do I want to call it? Well, I'm going to call it hairache so that I can remember what who my client is that this color palette is relevant to. So there's my color sitting right there. All right, what about the orange? Let's do the same thing. If I select the orange, now come down to the uniform fill dialog. I'm going to do the same thing, go straight across to palettes 
and that's the same color palette we're working with and you'll notice that the new color here is a little well I'd say on the dull side compared to my original so at least we're in the right area so I can choose an alternative in fact if I click through them watching over here I believe that color is more closely matched and brighter which is what I'm looking for well rather than click OK I'm actually going to add this color to our new color palette simply choose from the drop down list the new color palette hair ache and then click add to palette and as you can see it's now been added to our palette click OK and of course this now is also colored according to the new Pantone color so we've achieved creating a new color palette and adding the two colors that we intend to use so what do we do now well of course simply just select your items and click the new color palette to color everything but I do want to show you two other methods of coloring as well while we're here just to give you some additional skills a tool that I use regularly is what we call the eyedropper tool if you select the eyedropper tool come straight up to the property bar and make sure sample color is selected this is a great way of being able to uh, sample a color and if you for example watch me click on the orange and then watch down here so if I click the orange you can see I've now sampled that Pantone orange and then all you have to do is put your finger on the shift key and that creates a little fill bucket as you hover that fill bucket over an object you can see a, a hollow square which means if I click now I'd produce an outline of that color or if I go a little further it becomes solid and that means I can fill that object with that color so I'll click and then click and then click now if I select these items as you can see they've now got that same Pantone color another way of if you have multiple tasks to achieve for example let's say that I select this and I then click the blue Pantone color and then there's a number of items I want to do this to I want to actually choose that blue area up there and I want to apply it to that as well an easy way to do it is to also do repeat fill or control R if you like so if I do that then I've applied that same fill to that as well of course we don't have a lot of objects here but they're great skills to know about for this process well let's see how we're going we need to now go back and look at our uh, print dialog box to see where we're at color wise so let's go back to separations and how are we going here well as you can see cyan magenta and yellow have been removed let's just turn print separations on however we still have black there's our two new colors so why don't we use this here to determine where the black is so we've already got it selected our black plate is showing us there's something right there but I can't really see that very well so I'm going to go to the larger print preview click print preview and click the little zoom tool and zoom in right there okay it looks like it's part of our splotch well what have we done let's close that down cancel that let's go in and have a look a closer look at this splotch to see what the problem is what we're going to find here is that the emboss effect has actually added some other colors and one of those would ha contain black let me delete these two so we can quickly look at this we can actually break the emboss object apart by selecting it up to a range and break bevel apart it's called a bevel even though it's embossed objects that mix a spot color with another color will be converted to a group etc basically we've got a Pantone color over the top of a CMYK color so there's an issue we already know that don't we so let's place that one there and we need to ungroup these two and effectively we have three splotches that are all different in color this one is most likely the one that's got the black in it and what can we do well in reality we only have one color to work with so let's simply choose the new Pantone blue this one here already is the correct Pantone color but I'm simply going to uh, select the orange and increase the tint up to a maximum 100% because I want to show you how you can adjust the tint level simply come to your fill fly out select the color docker window select your object and then you can adjust the little tint slider there and really by adjusting the tint when you're using a Pantone color you really are giving the impression of an extra color so if you wanted to have the illusion of multiple colors you really can use tint as an option to create additional colors within your design okay 
I'll select both of these objects, E and C on my keyboard. Then I'm just going to arrow up twice, arrow to the left twice, select this one, select this one, E and C on my keyboard, and again, select the top one, arrow up twice, and arrow to the left twice. Then I will select the whole thing and group, place it down there, plus on my keyboard to create a duplicate, shrink that down, pop it just there, again plus, shrink that one down, and pop it just up there. F4 to zoom out. Well, what do we do now? We need to see, did we get rid of the black? So let's come up to our printer icon, open the print dialog box straight to separations, and as you can see, we now only have our two Pantone colors. So that's excellent. What we've done is we have successfully created a two color print using Pantone spot colors. What we now need to do is deliver this to our printer in a way that well there'll be no hassles or problems for our printer and of course we certainly don't want any problems. So let's publish this to a PDF file. To publish to PDF we come up to file and down to publish to PDF. Obviously navigate to where you want to save your file and then click settings. It's very important again right now you communicate with your printer. You need to know uh, what his level of compatibility is with Acrobat. In other words, what version of Acrobat is he able to successfully print from? And he'll easily know the answer to that question. Working with Acrobat 4 or lower has some issues and it can be a little harder. Working with 5 and higher, it generally gets a little easier. So we'll talk about that as we go. I'm going to choose Acrobat 6. Let's go along to the next tab, the Objects tab. If we were working in uh, Acrobat version 4, the JPEG quality would be fairly important because a lot of what we've done would be converted to a JPEG, so we want a high quality JPEG. However, as Acrobat version 6, um, the, the, this particular brochure is full of line art, vector art, so there won't be any bitmaps present, so JPEG quality won't have an impact. What will have an impact though, First of all, if we come over here to the pre-flight tab, you'll notice there are two issues. The document contains small fonts and fonts cannot be embedded. So in other words, if our printer does not have these fonts, well, there'll be a problem printing this. We've got two solutions. Because we can't embed the font, we could go back into our document and convert all of the fonts to curves or Back here under the Objects tab, we can do it automatically, export all text as curves. Now you'll notice we're one issue less. Now it's simply letting me know the fonts can't be embedded, and this is not a problem because we've converted them to curves. OK, moving on, the next few tabs we're not going to look at, but we're going to go to the Advanced tab because this is fairly important. By default, output all objects as CMYK. Well, we just spent uh, 20 minutes trying to figure out how to have spot colors and not CMYK. So you need to choose native. Native is the option you want to work with, and that will maintain all of the decisions we have made inside of our document, and nothing will automatically be changed to anything else. All of these other options are about right, and you really don't need to adjust any of those. So simply let's go ahead click OK, save our document, and then we're going to, I've already saved it, but I'll save it again, and then we're going to open our document and have a look. Well, rather than going to Windows and opening your document, an easy way to find it again is to go File, back to Publish to PDF, and of course it'll be right there. Right click and simply choose Open, and it will open up for you. So here's our printed document. It always pays. Before you send this off to your printer, make sure you have a good look. In fact, even zoom in. I really recommend that you zoom in and uh, make sure it's what you expect. And I think that looks pretty good down there. We'll just go up here and again zoom in. Just make sure everything is how you would expect it to be. And that looks pretty good to me. The one thing you might notice here is the colors do look a little washed out. At this point in time, I would recommend send your document to your printer 
and you need to go to your printer and ask him to show you these colours in his Pantone booklet. And even then, you'll still be able to select some alternate colours because really he's printing from plates and he can change the colours over for you to some richer colours if you can see them in his Pantone book. Well, that's all for this lesson. Hope you've enjoyed this one. We've covered a lot of ground.